What's up guys, it's Tom here and welcome to the Road to Glory career mode with Ferenc Farosh. We are in the final stretch of the championship promotion race. So after being so far down in uh, the table, all we can do is just keep plugging away and try to win. And straight away against Preston, we went on the front foot, we went all out attack. As I said, Ryan Maia is now our first choice striker because he has just scored so many goals lately. You just can't drop him. And he scores again. Absolutely brilliant finish. He's now has almost 20 goals this season. Santo with a good turn. He passes it to Lonkar. Lonchar, the defensive mid, who goes through and he parries it. What a finish by the defensive midfielder. Absolutely brilliant. Really good run and a thumping finish into the top corner and this is what we needed we really needed to get on the front foot and to score goals uh, and now we are free nil up uh, there is a goal missing here as well i'm sorry about that but tokmark scores a banger after a really good run by santo a young right winger who will develop and grow in this team hopefully as the years go by and we were not done yet we are thrown it up but we wanted to give our goal, goal difference a boost as well and my goes on a Run. He cuts back, he fake shots the defender, and what a finish! Mai went all on his own. He is bursting with confidence and he is saying, I'm the man, I'm the main man in this team, I'm the main striker, and uh, he can even spread the play as well. What was that pass by Schoen? But it actually, no, the defender wasn't close enough. And Santos, the youth academy player, oh my goodness, what is going on? 6 0 win. This is our biggest win away from home absolutely ridiculous the team really woke up after that Sheffield United defeat and said that we need to perform much much better we went on the front foot and Schoen borrows the defender he he goes past another player and then he loves it to my what a finish a record victory 7-0 away from home I'm not sure how many teams have won 7-0 Fulham did this in real life in last year's season in the championship. They won some games 7 0. Ryan Mai, six attempts, four goals, a quadruple of goals. He takes home the match ball. Absolutely scintillating attacking performance. And our next game is against Nottingham Forest. Gavrich goes on a really good run. He passes it to Zubkov who passes it to Boli and Boli says I'm still here I'm still a great striker you should play me more often Gaffer and he's doing that Neymar celebration as well so Boli has been on the bench lately but uh, when he plays he scores goals and that's what he's all about 10 goals now for Boli in 25 matches first half of the season I mean he had like six goals in eight games and we got very lucky here Nottingham Forest hit the bar and then Dibus collect the rebound so this game was a lot tougher than the Preston game. Zakariasen gets the ball. He passes it to Gavrich. Goes past the defender. And that is a beautiful finish. Perfectly into the top corner. Boli smashed the ball in. <laughs> Did you see that? And uh, Bo Bo Gavrich says to Boli, I can do the Neymar celebration as well. What a perfect finish into the top corner. Gavrich, who is from Serbia, I think. Really awesome, talented attacking mid. And Shigir the defensive midfielder goes through in the second half and we are smashing Nottingham Forest as well 3-0 we are really turned up a gear after losing to Sheffield United and we are now in a scintillating attacking form Wingo passes it to Tokmak who is a really really fast player he outpaces the defender finds Uzuni who takes it down and Nottingham Forest has just fallen apart in defense and there is our new youth academy player Wilson who we promoted just very recently Lucas is his name Lucas Wilson that's what his name is and what a thumping shot that was the goalkeeper made a good save there but the attack wasn't over Shiger holds the ball up he passes it to Wilson the youth kind of player and he scores his first goal in a Ferenc Varus shirt and he is our homegrown talent our home youth gallery player 
and he has incredible 93 to 94 potential of course we will try to loan him out because at the moment his finishing is around 50 when he promoted when we promoted him his finishing wasn't too good long cars or long cars uh, season is also over he suffered a broken toe injury as well and our next game is against Blackburn Rovers they are also fellow promotion hopefuls and Ryan Maia rose the defender and our top scorer our main striker gets us off to a flying start here as well we keep pushing we keep scoring goals but Blackburn are of course a much better team than the previous teams that we played and they showed that with a brilliant finish our backup goalkeeper Nizuli had absolutely no chance whatsoever with that in of the post but uh, we have said I want we want to we want to show the English football that we are good enough to get promoted so Tokmak with my plays a one two and my he scores again you just have a feeling with this guy that every time he's in front of goal he has a great chance of finishing the chances off he is re has really grown into a fantastic striker in the first half of the season he wasn't really convincing he wasn't playing almost every game Bolly was our main striker and oh my goodness Blackburn hit the bar and then we block the second shot that was a very very important sequence of events and Mai is clean through how can you leave one of the championship's top scorers so wide open and he makes Blackburn pay with his second goal of the game absolutely electric performance by Ryan Mai absolutely brilliant player I love him to bits and uh, you look how open Blackburn are defensively Shigir passes it to Santo who has acres of space in front of him and it's a very unselfish play and Schoen the left mid who we signed from the MLS uh, scores uh, his goal and probably he needed that he only had like three or four free goals before this one and we weren't done yet Beshe our right back uh, plays a one-two with uh, no plays a, a really good pass into Ryan Mai's path and he scores a fifth goal against a fellow promotion rival Blackburn Rovers we scored five goals and Mai had four shots four goals absolutely incredible attacking performance by Ferenc Varos and our next game is against West Brom away one of the hardest games on paper but West Brom surprisingly are in mid table they are not fighting to get promoted and Zacharias and gets the first chance but it's straight at the keeper and then Boli finds a Zubkov the winger from Ukraine and his shot is saved but Zubkov stucks in the rebound and then he goes out to celebrate with the Ferenc Varos fans it's a little bit of a lucky goal but we will take it this is game week 42 we don't have a lot of games left and thankfully West Brom didn't create a lot of chances in the first half this was their like only chance and Dibus with a long throw to Cevic the left back who finds Uzuni what a brilliant first touch he gets past the defender can he finish yeah oh my goodness what a counter attack from Dibus our goalkeeper to Uzuni through the left back Cevic fantastic counter attack and Uzuni slots it home and we weren't done yet we were smelling blood West Brom really weren't um, playing well and Bolly races clear and his shot is saved by Button and West Brom woke up <laughs> with a long shot that was their first like proper chance and then Zakariasen goes through after a pass from Bolly and he smacks the crossbar you know in every episode we just have to hit the bar and uh, Zubkov passes it to Vingo the right back goes through he passes it to Bolly who scores but it's offside unlucky Bolly really needed the goal but the linesman cruelly takes it away and then what is West Brom doing they pass the ball back to the goalkeeper who panics clears it out and then Johannesen the Norwegian youth academy player who we had in our youth academy scores his first goal for Ferenc Farosh Johannesen remember the name we will loan him 
out but later on in this career mode we will recall him when he is good enough and what a finish into the roof of the net he smacks it home Johannesen scores that's the highlight of this game and we win the game even though it was pretty even and we are leading the race for in the championship but we are only two points above Fulham so it's going to be very very tight Bournemouth Stoke and Millwall are in the top six but Millwall um, are only two points ahead of Queen's Park Rangers and our next game is against Birmingham game week 43 we only have four games left and Santos uh, the youth academy player starts and Kish the left winger who is a backup player but he has been scoring goals in the championship he he's really really going to be an awesome player in this career mode he slots it home so we straight away get on the front foot and then Mai back to Santos with the back heel and then Mai gets it he passes it to Tokmak but his shot is so weak that the goalkeeper got back so it's only one nil but Topmark passes it to Mai, our first choice striker can he do a skill move yes he can but then he smacks the crossbar what <laughs> what on earth was that the goalkeeper punches the ball into his own net after an absolute calamity this is not the goalkeeper is not the clown it's he's the whole circus that is absolutely hilarious the go oh my goodness the defender toe pokes it into the hands of the goalkeeper and the goalkeeper who by the way made some good saves gets an own goal absolutely embarrassing and then Tokmak the young winger not so young but a really brilliant finish after a really good through ball by Mai and now it's comfortable Birmingham just completely collapsed the goalkeeper can't even be bothered to make a dive after that own goal mentally he just gave up and then Tokmak finds Mai Tokmak tries to return the favor and what a finish my smashes it in off the crossbar fantastic finish and we finish on a flourish this was not a 4 near game Birmingham were very very much in the game until the goalkeeper decided to give a own goal gift to us and our next game is against Luton Town away from home game make 44 so we only have three games left with this and the left back Cevic I think that's his first goal of the season what a strike by the left back Cevic I think he's from Serbia that wasn't expected but then Luton with a cross and Adebayo what a towering header by the tall striker he completely dominated the center back I think it was Boktka so the at half time we were only 1-1 one, one, at 1-1 one, one, and then Besic goes through the defensive midfielder comes up with a rare goal this game was about players who stepped up who aren't scoring regularly both Cevic and Besic probably had one or two goal the, in total during the season and then Adebayo to Barry and Luton fight back it's 2-2 two, two, 69th minute and we could lose out on direct promotion if we draw this game Nitsuli our backup goalkeeper had no chance but 78th minute Uzuni gets the ball he passes it to Blažić the defensive no it's uh, the, he's the center back he passes it to Zakariasen who goes through and then Blažić his shot is blocked and Tokmak scores the rebound one of the biggest goals of the whole season and Tokmak then who does a one-handed push-up Tokmak doesn't score too many goals but when he scores it's always vital it's always important he slots home a massive massive goal and the game wasn't over yet 84th 85th minute Tokmak passes it to Zubkov we try on the counter-attack Shiger with a brilliant turn and then Tokmak who is really really loving life at the moment because he scores another one and of course it's time for the crazy celebrations these two goals by Tokmak could be the difference between Ferenc Varos getting promoted to the Premier League or staying in the Championship and we don't want another grueling season in the Championship. Brilliant finish by Topmark. 
eight shots to six. This was a pretty even game. And we lead two points ahead of Sheffield United Fulham and Fulham with two games to go. This couldn't be much closer. Of course, our goal difference is much better. So at least we have that going. Uh, we even with four points from the last two games, we will get promoted no matter what the other two teams do. And these are the transfer listed players. We, of course, are looking to sign some young Hungarian talents. We are just, I just wanted to show you this. These are the players that we are looking to sign. And we also managed to pick up Schaefer, the defensive midfielder on a free transfer. He is 70 rated with a potential of 76. He's only 23 years old and we need young defensive midfielders uh, in the squad. And we have two games coming up, two absolutely massive games. And we decided to transfer list Dibus, our uh, first choice goalkeeper, because we want to sign a much better goalkeeper. Dibus is like 31 years old. And the next game against Derby County, we could get promoted in this game if we win this game and the other teams don't win. We could get promoted. We could even win the title in this game. Results go their way. They could be crowned champions. So let's see what happens. Ferenc Varos against Derby County. Massive game. Only two games left in the season and Ozuni picked up an injury very early on. He passes it to Civic, who passes it to Mai, and Mai's shot is saved. But this is a really good start. We started on the front foot. We pass it to Botka, the center back, to Tokmak, who is really in fine form after his two late goals. He is cooking Tokmak. He passes it to Gavric. What a save by the keeper. We were peppering the goal, but then of course Derby isn't just going to hold their hands up and surrender. They almost scored, that was really close. And then Tokmak makes a good run, but Mai doesn't pick, it, pick him up. Besic, the defensive midfielder who is also on good confidence because he scored in the previous game. Uh, Gavric gets injured I think as well, which is really really unfortunate. Now we have two injured players <laughs> in the final part of the season and Tokmak, while Gavric is still down, uh, down passes it to Mai, who takes a good first touch, but then his shot is straight at the goalkeeper. It's unbelievable how many chances we are having. And then in the 37th minute, Besic fluffs his line. The, maybe the nerves are getting to our players. At halftime, it's nil-nil. And Sheffield United are drawing at the moment. I don't know what Fulham are doing. But as you can see, Blažić and um, Zubkov got injured. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't Gavric, sorry. It was Blažić, our centre-back. So we weren't uh, too lucky in this game. And then the unthinkable happened. Derby County scores after we had like five or six six big chances in the first half. Derby County are the party poopers at the moment and then Gavric, Boros the defender and then he does a... what what was that? Did you see that? Little burst of pace by Gavric. I don't know what happened there but then my friend uh, Boris didn't expect the ball to fall to him so he didn't shoot in time and this is unbelievable. Derby County are 2-0 up. Absolute disaster at the final hurdle we could fall can we have the absolutely incredible mental capacity to come back twice we were like 10 minutes to go we were 2-2 in the previous game we won it 2-4-2 and then Besic we have a lifeline we have a go back 70th minute Besic scores two goals in two games the backup defensive midfielder who scored I think one goal all season now Besic has two goals in two games don't celebrate too much because we are still behind that's a really good finish this is an absolutely incredible game, by the way. I hope that you guys are enjoying this. I'm even having a lot of fun just re-watching this. And Besic again! He passes it to Mai! Can he keep going? His composure? No! What was that finish? Mai is finished, deserts him at the worst possible moment. And then Derby County almost puts the dagger in. But Botka, in the 87th minute, he passes it to Mai. Surely Mai this time can finish it off. Please, Mai. Yes! 
the eighth minute from two nil down. We equalize. It's two two. My had like three sitters that he missed in the in this game, and finally he redeems himself with a late goal. And that's how it finished. From two nil down, we come back and pick up a very valuable point. At least we didn't lose this game. So now all we need to do is just win the last game of the season and even on goal difference we can win the title and we are greedy we want to win uh, our first trophy of this career mode because who knows how long it will take to win another trophy as you can see it couldn't be much tighter we are level on points with Fulham and two points ahead of Sheffield United so we can still finish in third place with one game to go but if we win that last game we win the title absolutely insanity and Millwall are still in the top six two points ahead of Queen's Park Rangers wow Uzuni will miss the start of next season he's out for three months Zubkov is out for four weeks and we we picked up three injuries. Blasic also broke his toe. He's also out for three months. At least we only have one game to go. And this is it. Peterborough United away from home. The last game of the season. And my shot is saved. I'm not sure why I shot from here. But the, oh no, Nitsuli, uh, don't do this to us. He passes it to the Peterborough player. The nerves are getting to us. There weren't that many chances in this game. It wasn't like the Derby County game. Coverage passes it to Maia. Surely Maia! 1-0 Ferenc Varos. This goal could win us the title and get us promoted to the Premier League. Brilliant 1-2 between Coverage and Maia. And Maia finally finds his shooting boots. That's his 24th goal in 23 games. Sheffield United and Fulham are playing each other so, and they are drawing. That is absolutely crazy. And Gavrich almost hits the post. And then Bully gets taken out by the Peterborough player who already had a yellow card. Frankie Kent is sent off. He gets a red card. So we are 1 0 up and we are one man up. We are playing against 10 men for the last few minutes. Uh, Lucas Wilson, the homegrown talent, came on. Shigeir passes it to Tokmak. Tokmak passes it back to Boli. And Boli, who hasn't scored for so, so many games. I don't even remember when Boli scored the last time. His celebrations are worthy of, uh, you know, winning the league. And then Shigeir in the last minutes passes it to Lucas Wilson and his shot is blocked but what? The referee feels generous. I don't think that is a penalty. I think the defender got the ball but we get a penalty and coverage steps up and he scores 3 now. And we are going up, we are going up, we are going up, we are going up. The Peterborough fans have already went home. The half of the stadium is empty. Ferenc Varos win the last game of the season and we win our first trophy of the career mode. The championship league title is ours. We took it to the last game of the season. I'm not sure what those two guys are doing in the middle of the pitch, but the championship has black and green ribbons just like our away shirt absolutely brilliant and it's Botka the center back who is now the captain who lifts the league title the championship promotion is complete what a first season this was we were by far the top scoring team in the championship scoring more than a hundred goals we have a goal difference of 69 and Botka goes out to the Ferenc Varos fans to celebrate. It's a shame we couldn't win the title in our home stadium, but at least we are celebrating our first trophy of this whole career mode, the Championship League title. It's not like the biggest trophy, but this will be so much fun next season. Ferenc Varos in the Premier League. We will try to strengthen the team as much as possible, but it's just beautiful. Championship champions Ferenc Varos and I think we deserved it. We had the expected goals of three. We 
There weren't that many chances in this game and Gavrich with a goal and an assist was the man of the match. And this is how the league table finished. Sheffield United have beaten Fulham on the last day of the season, which is absolutely incredible because this means Fulham miss out on automatic promotion and we win the title by two points ahead of Sheffield United and we will see who will, who will get promoted through the playoffs and Millwall held off Queen's Park Rangers to finish in the top six but this is going to be fascinating uh, and the biggest surprise is that West Brom only finished in 18th place Hull City, Huddersfield and Barnsley got relegated the pro promotion playoff semi-finals finished like this Millwall knocked out Fulham on penalties, Little Millwall, who finished in 6th place, they sneaked into the playoffs and Bournemouth also lost to Stoke City. So the teams who got promoted in real life, Fulham and Bournemouth, they lost in the promotion playoff semi-finals and Millwall has done the unthinkable, finishing in 6th place in the championship. They got promoted to the Premier League. That is absolutely amazing. What a story. And this is how the top scorers finished in our club. Ryan Mai, what a season he has had. In the first part of the season, Bolly was our first choice striker, but Mai is scoring 26 goals is amazing. Tokmak ended up on 13 goals. Gavrich with 8. Bolly had 12 goals. Uzuni, 8 goals as well. Santo, 7. Zakarias, and 6. And the backup players like Schön and Varga scored 6 goals, 4 and 3. Kish also scored three and Oyer Santos four goals in nine games as a youth career player that's amazing really underwhelming season by Zubkov though he's a first choice right winger with 78 finishing only three goals in 70 27 games he needs to really step it up next season and you can always pause the gameplay anytime you want if you want to check out some of the growth of the young players and coverage also eight goals and ten assists for a young player that's pretty brilliant our backup goalkeeper grew by three points and uh, that is really awesome Schoen I think also grew by four points um, and Varga yeah he went down by four points and Rocco Baturina who uh, I think we loaned out to Poland to a Polish club and as you can see we promoted some of the youth academy players like Fahir the youth academy goalkeeper got promoted Manchester City won the FA Cup Watford made the final oh my goodness how on earth did that happen and as you can see these are these are the earlier rounds in the FA Cup so Man City won the FA Cup and we will find out who won the Premier League and yeah we only went to the third round replay against Leicester we got knocked out Everton won the League Cup so Everton won their first trophy since 1995 that is amazing Sheffield United knocked out Liverpool on penalties in the League Cup and we also lost uh, I think on penalties yeah to Colchester that uh, saying is that text is wrong we didn't win the penalty shootout and I didn't show you the whole preseason tournament but Mainz won the preseason tournament against Udinese we lost on penalties to Mainz after finishing second in the preseason group stage Chelsea won the UEFA Super Cup after winning the Champions League the previous season and Liverpool won the Champions League that is brilliant against Manchester United the, their biggest rivals Liverpool knocked out Atalanta in the semi-finals they knocked out Barcelona in the quarter-finals so this is brilliant Liverpool kings of Europe they knocked out Real Madrid 5-1 on aggregate absolutely crazy Leipzig and AC Milan didn't make it through the group stages in the Champions League we are a long way away from this competition but next season our main aim will be to finish hopefully in the top half of the table let's target the top 10 finish and Real Sociedad won the Europa League congratulations to them they beat Benfica in the final who knocked out Villarreal in the semi-finals and no English team made it to the quarter-finals of the Europa League which is a little bit of a surprise um, Betis knocked out Ajax in the round of 32 and yeah the English teams uh, like Leicester they they dropped down to the Conference League which is a real surprise West Ham also dropped down the Conference League that's why there were no English teams in the knockout stages of the Europa League and PSV Eindhoven beat Tottenham Tottenham the perennial 
losers. They lose another cup final, another European final loss for Tottenham. Quite amazing. Uh, and uh, yeah, Tottenham went to the final. West Ham got knocked out in the quarterfinals. And uh, yeah, that is really embarrassing for Tottenham. They were heavy favorites against PSV Eindhoven and they couldn't win the European Conference League uh, even though they won their group and went all the way to the final. France won the World Cup against Portugal. England beat Austria in the third place uh, match. In the semi-finals, France and Portugal beat England and Austria. How on earth did Austria qualify for the semi-finals in the World Cup? That is a quite an amazing achievement. England beat Scotland and Austria knocked out Spain in the quarterfinals. Now that is one hell of an achievement and Austria knocked out Czech, the Czech Republic as well. We weren't managing an international side, so we weren't taking part of the World Cup. I just really wanted to show you that my home nation, Hungary, finished in the bottom uh, of the World Cup uh, group stage and Andre Silva and Ryan Sterling finished as the top scorers of the World Cup and Usmane Dembele finished as the top assist guy and in the championship Ryan Mai finished as the top scorer and Boli finished as the top assist guy and which is absolutely brilliant in the FA Cup Jamie Vardy finished as the top scorer Mares finished as the top assist guy and in the League Cup Richarlison and I think there was a Leeds United player Harrison who finished as the, the top scorer I'm just running you guys through the, all the statistics and Ronaldo finished as the top scorer in the Champions League because Man United went to the final Mane and Salah were the guys uh, who were finishing top scorers for Liverpool and they helped Liverpool win another Champions League trophy which is pretty brilliant in the Europa League, Pizzi from Benfica finished as the top scorer. Now that is surprising, but sadly Benfica lost the final to Real Sociedad. And in the Conference League, Bergwijn from Tottenham finished as the top scorer, but Tottenham couldn't win the Europa League, European Conference League, sorry. And this is the guy that I'm going to promote, Norbert Fahir. 93 to 94 potential, absolutely crazy goalkeeping stats and we are also promoting Bolog who is an attacking mid 86 to 92 potential we will loan out these guys they won't play much in the Premier League so it's better to loan them out and as you can see we already managed to sell some players Marin, Somalia and Dibus our first choice goalkeeper we're all sold and we are looking to sign a goalkeeper for next season we will see whether the Hungarian goalkeeper Gulaci is available or not so here are all the transfers that we did in season one as you can see so we signed Kish and Schön and Long Varga on a free transfer Fiola on a free transfer and the biggest transfer Lautaro Martinez went to Man City Marino went to Liverpool John Stones went to Juventus and Kamara and Nicolas Schule went to Arsenal and who else went to Liverpool as well? Kim Pempe went to Man United and Hermoso went to Man City. So there were some really big moves in the Premier League. Raul Jimenez went to Tottenham. Now that is a strange signing as well. And as you can see, we managed to um, make uh, 120 million pounds in uh, profit, I think. And we, we have uh, 11 and a half million pounds uh, in our transfer budget. And my Tokmak and Gavrich were the highest selling shirts in season one of this career mode. And as you can see, our manager popularity rating was pretty high. We didn't sign a veteran player, but we completed every single other objective. Uh, we went seven games undefeated at home. We gained automatic promotion, but we didn't qualify for the FA Cup round of 16. And Chelsea won the Premier League. Man City didn't qualify for the Champions League. Now that is the, one of the biggest shocks. Liverpool finished in third place. Leicester and probably Leeds United qualify for Europe. Arsenal didn't even qualify for a European competition. Crystal Palace and Brighton and Brentford got relegated. PSG won the French League. Borussia Dortmund won the Bundesliga ahead of Leipzig. Bayern only finished in third place. That is also surprising. Juventus won the Serie A one point ahead of AC Milan. That is amazing. Benfica won the Portuguese League ahead of Sporting and Porto. And Atletico 
Atletico Madrid won the Spanish league. Bilbao finished in second place. So Real Madrid and Barcelona only finished in third and fourth place. And these are all the results from season one of this career mode. I really, really hope that you guys enjoyed this season one career mode it was a lot of fun i had a lot of fun making uh, the episodes and of course recording it with my best one of my best friends borish season two is going to be amazing premier league here we come really really looking forward to it thanks for watching guys hope you enjoy this have a nice day see you later goodbye